Judy spoke the baptism of the Holy Spirit over my life when I was just, I couldn't even tell you how old I was. And uh, how great our God is <clears throat> and how far from God I went, that deposit remained and came to life. And praise God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I love the Lord. I love my prayer language. I just love him. Hallelujah. Um, man, I'm so excited. I really am. They have just done so much, and they've done so much for me personally. I mean, you guys have always been there. I mean, for me and for my wife and my children, I mean, you've always been there. And so personally, since I have the mic now, I can say thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, I want to encourage you this morning, as they are a testimony of it, and even as they said that things were spoken years ago over their life, many years ago, about something like this would be happening. And you know, a lot of times, God will give us, he has to give us some, but if he gives us it all, it can kind of overwhelm us. Because sometimes we just can't see that far. And let me encourage you this morning that God has a vision and a plan for each and every single one of you. God's got not only a destiny, but a destination within the destiny. I'm not talking about destination when we pass away and go home to the good Lord in heaven. I'm talking about a destiny that will come to fulfillment. They will start, it will come to fulfillment, and you will start another one. You guys have had a journey and a season here. It is coming to an end. Just the season. You've been seeking knowledge and wisdom ever since I've known you. Thank you, Dad. Look at that servant. <clears throat> And God's got an A and he's got a B for our life, but what happens, what has to come in between is very important, and it's the knowledge and understanding. It's the wisdom God wants us to applicate to what, with what he's given us. And so when God gives us a plan, when God gives us a vision for us, it's really not for us. It's for him and his glory, but we get to reap an awesome thing called blessings and joy and fruit and righteousness and peace and harmony and strength. All these attributes that come with Jesus Christ, we get to share in that with him, but it really it's not about us. We honor Bruce and Judy, but God knows, listen, this, what's going on is not just about you. And every time I talk to Bruce, I'm like, man, I know you're excited to go see your family. And I know, and I can't, you know, these things are coming around. It's been so long. He'd always go back to the point, yes, but God's got something for us to do. What they have been here doing for years, years, is walking through the equipping process, walking through the training process, walking through the disciple process, walking through the mentorship process, going through the pits together, going through the highs together, all the things called life. And now God says, you're ready. It's time to go on to the next one. <laughs> and now, you know, we have this thing called life where it's up and down, but our heart is to always, you know, the Proverbs in 4 says, it talks about knowledge and understanding. You can see, like, in your Bibles, it'll say above the title before Proverbs 4, it says, wisdom is supreme in a lot of your Bibles because that's the focal point of the, the commands of God, the instructions of God. The heart of God as Father has always been to obey my instructions because they set you up for godly success. And there are times we make wise decisions, and when I'm talking about wise, I'm talking about, here's the difference between knowledge and wisdom that I'm learning. Because they're similar in certain, in certain uh, you know, understandings, but they're not like synonyms. They're not, they don't mean the exact same thing. 
And so here, a basic illustration is knowledge would be um, I know how, I learned how to use a gun. Knowledge, I've got the instruction, I've got the information, I know how to clean it, I know how to unload it, I know, I know all the safety regulations you could possibly know about a gun. But if I have not wisdom, If I lack the training and understanding and teaching of knowing when and when not to use it, makes a big difference. Now, one can possess knowledge, but one may not carry wisdom. And this can be encouraging or discouraging. I hope it's encouraging. <laughs> but wisdom doesn't matter about age. Come on, somebody. I know, I know. I, I, we can be an old fool. Come on. <laughs> yes, sir. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Preach it. Man. And that's just it, because you can carry knowledge without the wisdom. But if you have wisdom, knowledge will come with it. You can possess one and not have the other. But when you have wisdom, if I'm trained and I know when and when not to use a gun, you best believe I already know how to operate it. And so the focal point of anyone's mission or journey in life Is wisdom and knowledge. Let me see if I can spell this right. Knowledge. Here's the thing, and I, I use you guys for an example. Here's the kingdom of heaven. Got a crown of glory up there. Right? His direction and his mission, everything you guys have been, you've been obedient to, has been from above. And so he sends it down and gave Bruce and Judy vision. Gave you, a, gave you revelation of who he is and what he does and how he transformed lives. And within that vision, you came to complete submission to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Here's, here's what happens in life, if we're not careful. Unfortunately, there are circumstances happen, but by the grace and mercy of God, he picks us up and cleans us off. Can I get an amen? amen? Thank you. So we're all in the same accord. A lot of things go on here, and we talk about what's called a bell curve, and we shared it with some of you. And what happens is we have this thing called a bell curve, and it's basically the cycle of the believer at times if we're not careful. Because first we carry the vision that Bruce and Judy carried. All of a sudden, when, we're, when we see who God is and we're hungry for everything of him, which means, what do you have for me, for you? What's inside of me for you? What are the gifts inside of me? What's the grace inside of me? How did you, uh, 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 how did you put me together? And you knew it from the womb, even before. Um, so we got... Structure. God was working on you guys in this process. 40 years? 78, you became a deacon? That's an awesome, man. I'm, I'm 40 years old. That was a great year. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in this time of structure, in this time of being built, in this time of understanding who they are, and man, that's a journey. But remember where it's coming from. It's coming from above. It's coming from above. And then after all this process, man, we start to realize what God has called us to do. When we get up here, we got our ministry. We know a ministry. Come on, everybody. We all got a ministry. Right. Don't you be sucked into that religious stuff thing that everyone only inside these walls up here speaking has a ministry. That is false. 
Every one of us is called to be a priest. Every one of us is called to represent his nature and his love on this earth. And every one of us has gifts inside of us. And so, praise God, they started finding out, man, Lord, what do you want me to do? And they started serving. Willingly. Today, it's a, for some reason, today, this, this, this time we're in, it's, it's, this, this is hard for people to grasp or believe in. I don't know why. I don't have those answers. But they've been exact representations of what it's like to give their life to the Lord and know everything that came from was above to be built up and they find their service in the Lord within the walls and without because they've been living it as you're seeing. They go on vacations and they can't stop talking to people about the Lord. They're being sent and you get to enjoy the weather. That's how great our God is. Come on, somebody. But see, here, this was always God's design right here. This section, keep on moving, keep on staying focused. But sometimes we start, we get up here, we're like, man, what's going on? If we don't focus and continue to press in from the wisdom and knowledge of the kingdom of heaven. Wisdom is discernment. It's the detection, knowing when and why not to do so, uh, something. Knowing when to move, when not to move. How many of you know that sometimes not moving is wiser than moving? In their heart, longing to be with your children, away from them so long, yeah, you would love to, but you knew it wasn't time yet. It wasn't time yet. Their heart was always for, Lord, you tell me when to move. Let me just say today, I don't know, and I've been guilty of it. I would like a bigger house. I, I mean, my family's growing, um, and I think about, you know, moving and what. But I got to sit down, Lord, what do you want from me? Do you want me to move? Or do I just want it? A little awakener for you. I know, that's just me. None of you guys go through that. <laughs> and so, and so, if, if we get away from the instruction of God, if we get away from what he, what he has for us, then we start getting nostalgic. Which means we're going downward. Come on, the glory days. Man, the way things were back when. This was a great time. Everybody was hungry. What's going on? Look at the past. This is what we did. Now, don't get me wrong. The things that happened in the past were great. But if all we do is focus on what used to happen then, we're not focusing on wanting to improve the godly now. And so what nostalgia, we don't even know, subconsciously starts creating doubt. It'll create fear. It'll create rejection. It'll even create unbelief if we're not careful. Because nothing's happening the way it used to anymore. One thing that will never change, and I pray to God we all believe on this, is that his word will never change. And we lay our life down for the truth of his word. That's the reality of it. They're doing it now in Nigeria. They don't post. I see it on Facebook. All these Christians are posting. Man, there's, a, there's a manslaughter in Nigeria. They're wiping them out by the hundreds. Because of their faith in Jesus Christ. We get to share this stuff free. I need to be more grateful. And strengthened. So anyway, so what happens is if we come down this nostalgia thing, we start doubting and we start wavering from the ways of God. We start wavering from the instruction of God. Until we start going down to a complete dropout. Well, we're just done. I'm done. Here's why God is so awesome. Because we have this thing called life. I'll use Bruce and Judy. Instead of saying life, this is Bruce and Judy. I mean, and when they started here, I mean, you're talking at least 40 years. 
40 years. They've had words way back here about, about, about what's going on. No idea what's going on. But they just trusted and waited on the Lord and pursued the things of God. And now he says, now it's time. Hallelujah. Now it's time. So what I'm saying is with all these things, the threats we have here, because this was never God's design for us. It was always to keep on pursuing, looking upward, Looking upward, because everything upward is coming down. Everything came from heaven. But we got to go back to the vision. When we get here, when we get to this dangerous point, we have to go back to our vision. And we know that scripture in the Proverbs. Without vision, what? Right. I like one, one of them is really good. I like, it says, without, without vision, my people run wild. They run wild. We saw what happened to Israel. I promise you a land full of milk and honey. Now, he didn't tell them what was going to happen in between. But this is, this is your promised land right here. Now, from where they're at in Egypt to Canaan was probably a few days' journey if they would have went through the Philistines. But God said, I'm not taking you there because you know what? You're going to want to run back. You're going to doubt. You're going to start thinking about what things used to be when you had it back in Egypt, your three square meals. And you're going to be comfortable. You're going to go back. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you in another direction. And I'm going to put you in a position where you can't go anywhere. And here comes the resistance at your back coming to meet you head on. And the only way out is through the impossible of God. You see, God had a promise for Israel. But what happened is, and you see it time and time again in the scriptures, they lost, they lost vision of his instruction. They lost vision of his ways. And so because of them, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Now don't get me wrong. We all have pits. We all have downs. We all have, I mean, some of our jobs we think of pits. Let me just be real. We don't say it out loud in front of our Christian brothers and sisters, but on Monday you feel your job is the pits. A couple giggles might be affirming. But God says, if you stay focused on me, you see, God's got a plan for each and every one of us. It, it's a vision. God said, listen, if all you do is see the now, then you're losing, you're losing track of what you saw when I told you something. Focus on what you saw from God, not what you see right now. Next week, we're going to continue to talk about this. Because in life, God's going to show us something, and we're going to have many obstacles in the way. But a lot of times, and we go back to the scriptures, and we rejoice, and we, and we, and we declare, and we encourage people with all these Bible stories. Look how they got through these things, and we even use them to build others up. And they were big things that happened. But then when something sometimes comes in our life, we think it's, it's like, Oh my gosh. This has to be the enemy. It must be the enemy. But sometimes we lose sight of what's going on in our walk with the Lord. He says, I'm going to allow this little thing in your life for you to say, you know what? (laughs) Once again, I cannot do it on my own. Lord, I come back to you. And he says, come to me, my child. Let's get up and let's move forward because I have plans for you. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, that we have Bruce and Judy here. We thank you, Lord, that you have built them up.
in this body, not only to be strengthened, but to strengthen us. The things they have invested, I mean, the people they have invested in is absolutely amazing. And so, Father, even today, we thank you for them, and we do release them. And we know that they are sent to continue to advance your kingdom. Lord, continue to show us what you have for us. Lord, I ask if no one here has seen a vision of what you have for their life, that they would get in the presence of you. And that they would earnestly and diligently seek after you to find out what you have for them, for you. We love you. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. amen. Church, we'll move on next week. Be encouraged. Be blessed. Hug somebody. Love somebody. Say hello to somebody in the name of Jesus. You are released.